Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about my Solex F3800 solar generator. I'm not going to go over all the features on this unit because you've probably seen a hundred different videos on all the different features, the different outlets, the stops on the back for laying it down, horizontal, vertical. I'm not going to go over all that stuff with you because you guys have all heard it before. So I'm going to cover some things that I have not found in other videos that would be very helpful for you in your decision making on whether or not to buy this particular unit. So. If you're looking to use this as a backup source for your power and let's say the grid is down and you want to charge it up and you don't have any sun and you want to hook a generator up and plug it into a generator. If you do plug it into a generator to charge it, the only outlets that will work are these three outlets here while it's charging. Now, once you're done charging, it'll, you'll hear a click and it'll turn all the outlets back on again. So if you're charging it, while you're using it, you can only use these outlets. You cannot use the 240 volts. Similar to the Delta Pro, if you're to hook two of the Delta Pros together and then use their hub to get the 240 volts, if you do any sort of AC charging, the Delta Pros will not work at all, where this unit, you will at least get these three outlets here. So now I wanna take a little bit of time here and show you a few of the features on the app. All right, so as you can see, it tells you your, your state of charge which is the same as on here, and so the, the temperature of the room that the unit is sitting in. You have your DC and AC input here, so if your solar is charging, it'll show right here, and then if you're uh, charging with the wall charger, it'll show up here. Anything you put out is gonna show in the next category here. You can turn your screen on and off from the app. You can also turn on a little night light if you need light in the room that this is in. So over to settings. The first option for your settings are the charging watts that you can choose. So you've got 200 all the way up to 1800 watts of charging capability. This is a nice feature if you have a smaller gas generator that you're gonna need to charge this up with from time to time when you're running off grid. You can set it up to, let's say you got a thousand watt generator and a thousand watts is, eight, is too much for that generator. You can bump it down to 800 or whatever your application is, you can change your charge settings. The next one is your timeout. You can have it where this thing will go into standby mode if there's no power being used for X amount of hours from 30 minutes all the way up to never having it shut off. You can adjust your different screen brightnesses if you want it brighter or darker based on the lighting in the room. And then also your screen timeout, so your screen will shut off automatically shut off after 30 seconds, a minute, whatever you choose. You can also rename your unit. This is where you go to connect it to your Wi-Fi network. You can choose between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then this is just your firmware and all that technical stuff. Um, that one of the nice things about this unit too is when I got it, it was already updated. I didn't have to do any firmware updates. The battery state of charge was like 86 or 88%, so it was almost fully charged. And as you can see, it's still running the latest software, no upgrade needed there. And then if you need the user manual, you can click here and it'll take you to the user manual. So pretty simple, straightforward, all right, so as you can see, I have the generator hooked up to the house. Currently, we're running everything on the house. The dishwasher is running, um, but it's cycling on and off. Uh, it, maybe it just finished, but it was running all the way up to 2,500 watts output. And you can see we've got about 1,137 watts coming in. We're getting towards the end of the day, so we're getting a little less sunlight. As you can see on the side here, we have our solar ports. Uh, one thing that I have found with this unit is if the temperature is below 50 degrees, it will reduce the charging speed, both on AC and solar. So if you have this in a cold garage, it will not charge at, at the maximum speed. If you have solar plugged into both ports, it will only pull from the front port until the unit warms up to 50 degrees. If you have something plugged into the back port, it'll pull from there. But once you plug something into the front, it'll automatically switch to the front port. Once it gets up to 50 degrees, then it'll start charging from both ports. So we've been using the generator now for about two or three weeks, and we've only had it trip 
one time on an overload, and that was because we were running the microwave and the air fryer, and the well had kicked on at the same time, and it just was a little too much for it to handle. And when it trips, you just gotta come out, push the button, turn it back on, pretty, pretty seamless. All right, so next I'm gonna take you outside, I'm gonna show you the solar panel array that we have. We have uh, one array of 1200 watts, and then we have another array that's only like 600 watts of solar power. All right, so this is the array that we're using. These panels came today. I just set them up this morning and we whipped together a quick stand for them. They are 200 watt bifacial panels. So six of them together, we got 1200 watts, which is the max input on each input on the solar generator. So we should be able to hit 2400 watts when I get my second array built. I'm planning on doing another array over here and that will be probably right here in the corner and that'll be on a sun tracking uh, device that'll be able to track the sun. Well, it'll be six panels on that. These panels are performing quite well. Earlier today it was at about 1100 watts from this array, but it is a little bit hazy today, so it's not the optimum day. So very pleased with these panels so far. I have these two panels are hooked together in series, and then these two are hooked together in series, and then these two are hooked together in series, and then we have these three series all hooked in parallel on the back side. Finding the most optimal array of panels was uh, tricky to do because you want to get as close as you can to the 60 volts so that you get the maximum amount of wattage input into your generator. So these are the ones that I found. I'll put a link in the description for you down below. Um, I purchased them on Amazon and they were actually very reasonably priced, especially for a bifacial panel. And then on the other input, I just have two of these panels here hooked up. They're uh, 390 watt panels and they're like 36 volts, so I can't hook them into series. I can only do them in parallel. So not getting a whole lot from them, but this thing here, these guys are, are really kicking out the power for me. The solar input on the side here, um, it's a, it has two different parameters here. It's kind of confusing. It doesn't mean that one is for one and one is for the other. They can both be used on the lower voltage or the higher voltage setting. So if you have two arrays that you want to plug in that are 50 volts, plug them right in and it will have no issues with it. They do send you a set of these adapters here so you can hook up three solar panels to one. They do not provide you with the XT60 adapt, Anderson adapter for plugging into the unit, which I don't know why they wouldn't do that and they only give you one set of MC4 T adapters. So if you are looking to get maximum solar out of this unit, you will need to purchase another set of these MC4 connectors, and they have to be 10 gauge wire. They cannot be the 12 gauge wire. They need to be able to handle up to 30 amps. So I'll put a link in the description for these down below. These are rated for this unit, and they will work perfectly with them. The other thing you'll need to get if you want to do any solar with it is you'll need to get the adapter cords. So this is the XT60, plugs right into here and then goes to your MC4 so you can hook your adapters up to that and then hook up your panels. Again, I'll put a link in the description for these as well. If you're not going to buy these, you need to make sure that you're getting a 30 amp rated cord, which would be a 10 gauge cord. So one of the things that I've been really impressed with with this unit here is I've left this in standby mode for the last two or three days with, uh, just, with it just connected to the network. None of the outlets were on, but just connected to the network. So running the network card in here, it has not drained the battery at all. It's still at 100% after two or three days of sitting still doing nothing, which is pretty impressive. So I have my other solar generator that I use, the Opez Mega 3. And that one, if you have it sitting there with the network on, the network does cause a pretty substantial drain overnight. It's like 10 or 15% of your power will be lost if you have the Wi-Fi on. So if you have a homestead with a well on your property that you need to be able to get water from, this unit here is gonna be the ticket for you. It's one of the most cost-effective 240 volt power, solar power generators on the market right now. The expandability of these units are pretty impressive and the expansion batteries are fairly inexpensive. The expansion battery for this system here is only about a third of the size of the unit itself. Or like the Delta Pros, if you want an expansion battery, the, the Delta Pro expansion battery is the same exact size as the Delta Pro. When you start adding up those batteries, that starts taking up a lot of extra space where the 
the Anchor Extra batteries are significantly smaller. So if you're looking to get a solar generator and you have the 240 volt requirement, I would hands down recommend this unit over the Delta Pros or any other unit that I've tried because this is a lot more seamless and just seems better built and has the greatest expansion capability of all the units that I've tested. So I'll put a link in the description for this guy as well as all the adapters that you'll need for this particular unit if you're gonna hook it up to solar. And I'll also throw a coupon code in the description for this as well. If you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button, follow the channel. I like to post a video every couple of weeks, different tips and tricks that I do around my homestead here to make my life easier. And also like to give different product reviews on different products and tools that we use on our homestead, trying to help save you money and make your homestead more profitable. So thanks again for watching guys. I hope you have a blessed day.